This is the Brazier doubloon, the first gold coin made for our country. This coin is currently insured for $6 million. My name is Steve Contursi. We're in Denver, Colorado, celebrating the 115th anniversary of the American Numismatic Association Coin Fair. Three full sets here. The American Numismatic Association. It has about 32,000 members worldwide, and it's devoted to collectors of coins, paper money, tokens, and medals. A typical day for me is going to be spent trying to answer questions. Where did this coin come from? Whose hands possibly did this coin pass through? And what can we learn about this coin by studying the history of its time? Numismatics is the study of rare coins, and a person who studies rare coins is called a numismatist. History is actually what drives most numismatists. What they're really interested in is the story behind the coins. In colonial times, there was no government that said, these are the coins for our people to use so they can buy the goods that they need to live. There were coins here literally from all over the world. And with such a hodgepodge system of coinage that was in place at the time, that was very, very difficult for people. This coin that I'm holding here is a Spanish colonial piece. It is known as a piece of eight. This was one of the most common coins among the American colonists. They would cut these coins into various smaller parts, and one-eighth of this coin was known as a bit. Let's say a father needed one of his children to go visit the local merchant, and he needed a certain amount of feed for the livestock, but he knew that a piece of eight, the entire coin, was too great of a value. He just needed two bits of this eight real. So he would cut the coin into, into the proper size, give those two bits to his son, and his son would be off to see the merchant to get the feed that they needed. After the United States won the Revolutionary War, okay, now we are no longer just the 13 colonies. We need to help our people live the lives which they are expecting to live. And they can't do that without a standard form of money. Instead of having people cut the coins on their own, why don't we just go ahead and make a dime or one-tenth those ten coins and equal a dollar? This is a 1792 half deem, D-I-S-M-E. This coin was struck using silverware that was donated by George and Martha Washington. When a coin is made, the dies come down on the metal and actually impress the design into the coin. And it's at that moment when we say the coin has been struck. This half deem is literally one twentieth of a dollar. So it is the equivalent in our system today of a nickel. The first two coins that were made in the United States were the cent and the half cent, both of which were produced or struck using copper. One cent in our society today doesn't go very far, but one cent in the early days of the United States went a long way. And with a half cent, um, this could buy uh, enough food to feed one person for one meal. This coin is a 20 cent piece. There were some people who referred to it as a double dime because it was two times a standard dime. This coin was developed in the 1870s um, specifically for use out west, where smaller denomination coins, such as a nickel and cents, because those coins were not struck in silver, they were not looked upon favorably by Americans who lived out west. They only wanted to deal in silver or gold coins. The best thing about this job is that I work behind a dealer's table and when people bring us different coins or notes, I get a look at these and see what's really special about these. I got just as much pleasure at a f looking through penny rolls when I was a kid in the 1950s trying to find that penny to fill in that little slot as I do now buying 1804 silver dollars. It's the same exact feeling. <laughs> 